when I talk about performance this morning, this is not going to be about oh let's let's just roll our sleeve and let's get into the in the course of the action. This is actually about stepping back, place ourselves into the role of a of a, of a coach, stepping back and thinking about how the game is going and then thinking about how we play as we try to grapple with how we think about performance. Uh, I'd like to uh, present this. This is a very simple model of what I call a, a performance loop. So the important thing to recognize here is that what we see, of course, is data, but that combined with, with the goals and the aims that we have, and this is what creates information. So information is a, is a combination. It's data, but data also interlaced with an implicit model of what is it that we're trying to, to do. I call that a, a game plan very, very loosely, and that, that defines what we see as important information and also affects the way that we uh, the way we reason. If you want a, a simple example, uh, all of us look at uh, at, at, at budgets and, and performance reports, and uh, we see the the familiar line. This is the actual. This is the budget, and this is the difference. And how do we interpret that difference is is very important. Often we think that it's you know the difference is um, is positive. This is good news. If it's negative, it's is is bad news. Uh, but it, we can actually interpret this differently uh, if we apply a more learning uh, mindset and we think that, you know, let's investigate and understand perhaps there are certain things that are sending us signals about how we need to um, adapt or learn or, or evolve. So there's three things in our organization that we can actually shift, we have control over. So if we put them on a on the 3D map, then we can see this very powerful combination in the middle, which I would call the traditional zone of performance that has three components. We usually take a short term view. We focus priority uh, is in terms of uh, metrics that focus on efficiency. When we think about how do we organize processes, this is often about control. This is what we ultimately call the, the, the feet, feet on the ground uh, game plan. So this is something that delivers very clear and efficient results over the long term in a very orchestrated or controlled way. Let's now think about moving in that space away from the traditional zone. And the first move we could do is to maintain our sense of control and efficiency. Uh, these are priorities and processes, but open up uh, thinking and say, well, let's think about where this takes us over the long term. What would the future look like if we project things forward? So we call that a, a window on the future. A different way uh, in which we can move uh, in, in that space is to um, open up uh, autonomy. So, so, so step back on, on trying to control processes and open up autonomy, still maintaining uh, that focus on short term uh, the results and that are more efficient. This is about this, uh, finding different ways of, of achieving results as opposed to uh, the way we usually do things. So we call that a scuba dive. That represents this idea that when you dive, you have a limited time to explore around, uh, but eventually you have to you have to come back to the main ship. The other interesting thing is that actually a move in the third direction is what we would call a fallacy. This idea of controlling over the short term but trying to learn obviously is a fallacy because there isn't much to learn uh, when things are constrained uh, in, in that way. On the lower side, having done a scuba dive, we can now open things up in the learning space and we call that a, a recon uh, mission. It keeps the short term focus and it's like sending a, a, a small troop to go out and explore, but they're no longer constrained by the uh, oxygen supply of the, the scuba dive tank. Uh, they have now open more open space to, to explore and learn uh, and the autonomy to do that. Eventually they, they, they come back and, and we reflect on and see what insights can be can be gathered. And of course, the move from you know having open autonomy and then all of a sudden to try and think long term uh, while while keeping a focus on, on efficiency metrics is again, that's the, the familiar fallacy. Now we can let uh, autonomy in, uh, and this is this takes us to um, eyes on the horizon. So this is really um, um, future focused uh, thinking in, in a very open way that we're, we're there to learn and explore uh, in unconstrained ways. We can, of course, get to that uh, through the other pathway as well. We scuba dive, opening autonomy, a recon mission with learning, and then we open up longer term thinking. And so here is a summary of all the game plans here and, and the pathways that we can see, the ways to move around them, that we can take the ideas of going from feet on the ground at one end to eyes on the horizon at, at the other and work out what are, the, what are the pathways, what are the game plans that we can develop so we can have not one way of doing things, but a whole portfolio of ways 
and and along the way we can easily and seamlessly uh, shift uh, across them. If we overly focus on keeping our feet on the ground, so that one of the things that happens if we never look up uh, towards the horizon is that over time we become obsolete because the environment around changes. Equally, if we're too focused on the horizon, too focused on where things are going to be in the future, we don't have the ability to deliver the results in the, in the short term because our feet are not on the ground and that, of course, jeopardizes uh, survival in, in the short term. And I'll leave you with a, with a parting thought. This is one of my favorite quotes. This is known as Neurath's boat, this idea, and it has to do with knowledge in the way that knowledge evolves. So what we have to do is while being at open sea, we have to change things plank by plank using the rest of the ship as support. So the ship needs to be seaworthy at all times. And at the same time, we have to rebuild it on the go. We can readily see how this idea of, of evolving knowledge is, is readily applied to how we think about evolving, uh, evolving performance and developing game plans. And hopefully the, the, uh, the framework that I give you and the, the movements in the game plan space and the set of uh, a wider set of, of game planning uh, option could become valuable in this effort. Disruption is a bit like trying to throw up everything into the air. Disruption actually uh, depends on, on being able to gain traction uh, in the short term. So that requires having some feet on the ground. There's a classic idea of that, that effective communication is always a balance between the obvious and the absurd. You can say things that everybody knows and they just say, well, that's obvious. But you can also say things that deny everything that your audience knows. So they, they try to challenge all of their assumptions about everything. So when you try to disrupt everything at once, in this case, the reaction is, well, that's absurd. And so they would they would close, they would close up. They would not, they would not be receptive to the message because that's absurd. And so the the the, the fine balance of you know that's interesting is that in between the obvious and the absurd. So the same with disruption. Don't don't disrupt everything at once, but build on things that can give you uh, some traction and, and common ground.